Hello, and welcome to my mini lecture on the matrix and loudspeaker processors. What a matrix is, that's what I'm going to discuss. It's a kind of a unique signal flow function that are found in live sound consoles and not found in recording consoles. And I'm also going to briefly overview uh, loudspeaker processors and what they accomplish and how they may be configured internally. Okay, let's start off with a review of the five building blocks of sound systems. Uh, they start with the sources, right? Mics and guitars and DIs and keyboards, and that's all plugged into a console, and the console sends things all over the place. And following the console, we've got a loudspeaker processor. And loudspeaker processors do all sorts of things, right? They EQ speakers and rooms and void feedback. And loudspeaker processors may or may not be a separate item. They may be built into the console, or they may be built into the power amplifier itself. Um, and then off from the power amplifier, we go to the loudspeakers. So these five steps in um, a sound system, I think it's important to, to, to kind of internalize because as we move forward in more complicated systems, i.e. the matrix, and it's kind of important to know how one thing flows to another. Now the matrix. A matrix is unique, as I mentioned earlier. It's not found in recording consoles. It's it's a live thing. And it's, it is a, uh, the way I like to put it is it's, a, it's an aux send on a mix. Right? You combine everything together, the stereo bus, you push up, push up the fader, and what if you want to send the stereo bus to a mix that's different? You can't. There's no aux sends on the stereo bus, right? And a matrix lets you do that. It lets you make, take a, a, a little bit of different mixes and combine them together to a new mix. And it's really useful for sending a stereo bus, your master mix, to multiple destinations. Uh, let me show you an example of that. So you got your stereo bus here, and it's all mixed together, all your bands all rocking, and they're all in your stereo bus, your master fader's going, and you want to send that to main subs, fills, and balcony fills, right? You got a four-way system here. And the matrix is a way of adjusting the individual output level of this mix to these four things so you can kind of turn down the subs and turn up the front fills and turn off the balcony fills or turn them down low or whatever you've got individual level and this is a very simplified sound system design but it shows you how you know your sources have been combined into this mix and now you have a mixer on your mixer you've got an output control you've you've got aux sends on your bus that's what a matrix is um let's make that a, a little bit more common uh, a better example here. So we've got our band, right? Kick, snare, overheads, bass, drums, guitar. We mix them all together. Got your master fader off to the left and right PA. You're rocking, but you need individual level control to the subs. So you can take that stereo mix, send it to a matrix, and send a little bit of that matrix to your subs. Now, this is a pretty simple system. You may or may not actually do this in the real world, but it is really common to use a matrix to send your mix to a press feed, to a video recorder to a two-channel audio recorder to a backstage mix that's what a matrix is for it's, it lets you use your existing mix and send it at a different level somewhere else now in this example here I'm using um, sub I'm using the sub as an example most people in the real world kind of avoid this they often uh, prefer an aux send to the subs and this lets you still send your mains to your mains your stereo mix goes to your mains but you decide hey instead you just want your kick and your bass to go to the subs and this keeps kind of the vocal and the guitar and these kind of other higher frequency sources out of the subs and it's important to understand the difference here between this aux fed subs and the previous which is um, matrix fed subs they you know we will discuss this at length later in, in the speaker systems course, but it's kind of important to understand how this the configuration is routed because there's some pluses and minuses to both methods. Uh, most people often use the aux fed subs, but there's some issues associated with it. Let's look at a third and, and even more complicated way of doing this. And this is not possible on any analog console I've, I've come across, and actually very few digital desks do this as well. This is where you combine auxes and matrices together. You're, uh, you still have your band mixed together in red through your stereo bus going off to the mains. And then you have a matrix. So the mix, the master mix goes through the matrix send and goes to the front fills, right? The front fills are there for people in the front row and they can't hear very well because the mains aren't pointed at them. 
And one of the problems with front fills often is that there's a lot of stage wash. The band's on stage, they've got stage wedges, there's a lot of low end bends around the back of the stage wedge and blast the people in the front row and the vocals end just sound kind of muddy and you can't really hear very well. And so one trick you can do when in this situation is you put your stereo mix into the front fills via the matrix, but if you've got a fancy digital desk, you might want to add a little extra level via an aux end or via matrix if you can get directly to the matrix um, from this vocal channel and kind of you know, make the front fills a little clearer. And this is a, 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 a cool technique. I used to use it when I was on tour with Lee Rittenauer. Guitar was always really loud on stage. People in the front row were always getting blasted by guitar. And if I had uh, fill speakers that were kind of going to the left and the right of the venue, kind of on the sides that weren't pointed towards the middle, I would always add extra guitar via a matrix, if I could, to those side fills because those people weren't getting blasted by the stage guitar. So it's the same technique where you're adding an aux or directly driving a matrix from a channel in addition to driving it from the stereo bus. Moving on with matrixes, another approach is that you don't do the matrixing in the console, but you do it in a loudspeaker processor. And this is very common. We actually do this at the Gracie, where your mix goes through a console, you push the level up or down, and then out comes the stereo mix, dry, plugs into the loudspeaker processor, and your lefts and your subs and your rights are all split and kind of configured within the loudspeaker processor itself. So I guess what I'm saying here is matrixing can happen in a loudspeaker processor or it can happen in a console. Now, loudspeaker processors, just to focus on them briefly, they're very powerful tools. You don't see them on simple little club PAs, but they're pretty common in, in major PAs. We have a variety, we have at least three loudspeaker processors here in Nescom. We've got a drive rack and a Galileo and an LM44 Lake. Pretty good um, coverage of the industry standards. And loudspeaker processors are great for reducing feedback, for EQing the room, um, for time aligning different parts of the system, for doing protective limiting. They do, they, they, they satisfy a variety of different goals. And I want to briefly kind of look at the the configuration within a loudspeaker processor so you have an idea as we go deeper into this course what's going on. Uh, first you have your inputs. Um, the lake we have here has m multiple inputs networked it has Dante as well as analog and digital. Our drive rack here at Nescom has got four analog and four digital so let's just stick with this four idea. Here's four inputs to the processor and then you have the option of processing these inputs. Um, it's very common to like EQ the entire mix or you want to EQ the whole room take a little rumbly 200 out of the mix. You'd want to do that with input processing. This means all you know maybe you're coming in with a left and right input and you would make sure you'd have the same EQ on both the left and right and you do that with input processing and depending on what processor you have, you have a variety of different things you may want to do, polarity, delay, EQ, compression, all that kind of stuff. And then from your inputs, you're going to go routing via a matrix to your outputs. And now you've got output specific processing. Do you want more delay on the front fills so they wait for the mains to arrive at that position? Do you want to cross over on the subs, taking out all the high end, like a, a low pass filter? Do you want to reverse the polarity on the, the, the um, cardioid subs you have? These are all things that can be done on a per output, per speaker, per drive line, I think is the, the, the good term to use, per drive line processing. So you got input processing and output processing, and both have their purpose. And then from there, you go to your individual loudspeakers. And this may be line level, or this may be digital, or this may be networked, and you know, via Dante, that sort of stuff. So this is your basic configuration in your loudspeaker processor. Now, an alternative way that this can be presented is using a crossover instead of a matrix. And this is where um, there's a separate the uh, filter matrix filter between filters between the input and the output processing that say you know what we're going to take the lows of our mix and send it to the subs and we can send the the, the highs to them to the mains or in this particular situation I've got a three-way lows mids and highs but often what you'll see is just the subs go to the subs and the tops 
see the rest of the mix. And this is very common that you will configure your filters, your crossover filters in your loudspeaker processor. And again, you got to make some decisions. Like if you want to EQ the overall mix for all speakers, you would do that with input processing. But if you need to do something specific to an individual loudspeaker, you do it with output processing. So that's a quick review of loudspeaker processors and how they function. We're going to learn a lot more, but this is important foundation. Have a great day.